It's not often I get to sit down with a cult icon, especially one who has had such a great comeback as today's video guest, Barbara Crampton. With the release of her new film, Jacob's Wife, available on Shudder on the 19th of August, we sat down together to discuss her new role as a minister's wife turned vampire, along with how the industry has changed, what she looks for in a role, and why she dislikes the term Scream Queen. Thank you so much for having a chat with me today. How are you? Hi. I'm great. How are you? Yeah, pretty good. Um, I have so many questions for you. I guess first off, uh, you're such a beloved horror icon, um, especially even here in Australia, all the way down under. Um, what keeps you coming back to the horror genre? Well, I, it's probably the stories and the fans. I feel like um, you can tell so many different kinds of stories in the horror genre. Um, it's a genre that's really embraced me as a performer and I've been lucky enough to work on some really wonderful cult films that have stood the test of time, you know, including Reanimator and From Beyond and now um, I'd say You're Next in 2011. Um, so I feel like it's a genre that's been very welcoming to me and I've met so many wonderful fans and so many wonderful collaborators that I just keep coming back to it because I'm having the greatest time of my life working in this genre. How have you found it's changed over the last, I guess, three decades um, with starting with Reanimator to, I mean, you talk about your next, and I've heard you talk about that quite a bit. Um, and I guess all the way through to your recent film, um, Jacob's Wife, have you felt mm. a big shift, especially in fan bases? Um, well, I think that's such a big, big question. The genre has definitely changed over the years, first and foremost, I do think that way back when I started, you know, 35 years ago or so, um, everybody sort of stayed in their lane, you know, Stuart Gordon directed a movie, but he, you know, he didn't really know much about cinematography and he didn't really know much about editing. And he didn't, you know, when he first started, he wasn't editing his own films. And I don't think he ever really did, although he was, you know, collaborated with the editor on the final process. Um, and I was an actor and I stayed in my lane and people called me up and they said, do you want to do this movie? And I'd go do it. But I felt like when I came back with your next, my eyes were open because in the independent horror space, especially, I saw that everybody was helping one another and everybody was doing all sorts of different jobs. You know, um, Adam Wingard was uh, directing that movie, but he also would frequently take the camera from uh, Andrew Palermo, our DP, and say, let me film this for a minute. And we worked with Joe Swanberg, who was a producer and a director and a writer and an actor in that movie. And Ty West was an actor in our movie, but he's also a director. And Amy Simons was in the movie and she uh, was an actress, but she's also a producer herself and a writer and a director now. So I feel like everybody was doing so many different jobs in the recent past and everybody knew how to do those jobs and they were helping their friends make movies. And that was just different. You know, in the old days, you were either an editor or a director or an actress. And now, you know, even very famous actors are directing and are uh, producing their own material. And so it's, I've, I've just seen it be a little bit more collaborative in that way and people helping one another to make films. And I think the expansion of that has been really wonderful. I think people feel like they can, they can do different jobs now because it's easier to make movies than it ever has been. It's all digitized and you know, that's an easier, it's just easier to learn on those systems than it is on the old systems that we had in the past. And I also think, you know, storytelling has gotten different, you know, from the movies that I was in in the 80s where they were very um, splattery and he heavy on special effects. And um, I do think in the films that I was involved in with Stuart Gordon, the characterizations and the depth of them were there, but I feel like even even now, I mean, movies in the 70s were very 
for very deep. And then we went to the splattery thing in the eighties. And now I, I again feel like movies have delved even deeper recently into what it, what it, what the inner workings of psychology are. I mean, when you look at a movie like Hereditary, or you look at A Quiet Place, and you look at the characterizations of what's going on in horror today, especially, it, it's deep. I mean, there's a lot of deep themes. Um, Parasite, you know, um, is is a very deeply meaningful movie about classism. And, you know, I don't know if a movie like that could have existed and been as popular in the horror genre 20 years ago or 30 years ago as a, as a as it is today. And, um, and you know, I, I, I think we've come a long way in, in, in the narrative sense of telling stories that are really meaningful to people. You have so much knowledge that other people who haven't been around for as long as you, especially just within horror, don't have. So I really wanted to ask you about that. Um, I also wanted to ask you what kind of roles you feel like you really gravitate towards because you've had such varied, I guess, yeah, different perspectives in horror. So there's there anything, I guess, as well with what you're talking about with deep horror, is there something that you connect to with a character that you want to play? Yes and no. I think it depends on the piece and what the directors or the, the director trying to say with the film that, uh, that I would, you know, respond to initially. So it, it depends, it depends. I mean, I, it can be a deep, yes, it can be a deep and meaningful character. And I feel like I've had a lot of those, but it can also be a fun character like I played in um, Beyond the Gates or in Sacrifice, um, recently a movie I did, or I recently did a, a, a Ricky Bates Jr. movie where it's more of a comedy and it's just sort of fun um, and a little bit lighter. So it just depends on what the, what the filmmaker is trying to say. And if I feel like I can bring something interesting to the role, um, and if the role has a good beginning, middle, and end as well. You know, so so more often than not, the roles that people ask me to be in their movie and I read it and I go, well, I just don't know if my being in the movie is really gonna add anything or if I can bring anything to it or if the role is has enough, um, you know, uh, of an arc to it that, you know, it's gonna be meaningful for me to be in it. You know, you could get anybody to play that part. Um, and I also like to play characters that maybe I haven't played before. So I, I'm not often repeating myself. With your with um, Jacob Swipe, I felt like this was an opportunity for me um, to play a classic character because she turns into a vampire. And I've never played a classic character before. And so that's one of the things that drew me to the project in the first place. And it's mostly men that get to play the iconic characters like Freddy or Jason or um, Chucky and um, where are the, are the female iconic characters? My next question actually was about Jacob's wife and the focus of the film, which is about a woman who literally gets lost in her husband's shadow. Um, and I was going to ask how if you were drawn to that, but it sounds like you were more drawn to the vampire aspect. I heard that you also love uh, the TV show Dark Shadow, so I wondered mm -hmm. if that was the reason that you wanted to play a vampire? I was drawn to the fact that she is a vampire, but I also was drawn to the themes of the movie because it, it is about a woman who is having an awakening to herself. She's an older woman and, you know, there's not a lot of roles written, you know, with this much depth for an older woman. It's also a movie about feminism. It's also a movie about a long-term marriage and how when something tragic happens to someone, how does that change the dynamic of the relationship? So, so yes, I wanted to play a classic character, but, th but that doesn't pale in comparison to the larger themes of the movie and really what the movie is saying, what it's about. I mean, I think that's equal to uh, my desire to play this character in total, that I felt like the movie had something to say about female empowerment and feminism and, and also not making the counterpart, the male counterpart wrong for what has happened to her, you know, that she takes some ownership in the fact that she's allowed herself to be marginalized in the relationship. And and now that this tragedy, so-called tragedy, happens, she gets bitten by a vampire, how, how, what happens? I mean, 
she has new blood coursing through her veins and it's horrible. She's become a vampire, but at the same time, she feels different and it's changed her. And sometimes tragedy does change you for the better. And how, how could that be? You know, how could she become enlivened and more passionate, more self-actualized as a person? And what does that do to her as a person and, and her marriage? So, I mean, that was, you know, exciting for me to play and also felt like it mirrored my own life in when I, was in my middle 30s and late 30s that I wasn't really getting a lot of roles in my career because there weren't a lot of roles written for me 20 years ago for that age group, you know? And then when I came back with your next, after having a break from acting for almost 10 years, I felt like I got a second chance. So the movie also, the themes of the movie feel like they mirror my own life in a way that I felt like I got a second chance in my career to sort of, act again and produce a little bit and you know do what all the younger kids were doing and and kind of reinvent myself and then move forward so now you've done the vampires are there ever subgenres that you haven't touched on within horror that you would like uh, to yeah there's there's a serial killer movie that i that i've been developing for a little bit um that there would be a part for me and that uh i really like to work on not that, you know, I think serial killers are the scary, one of the scarier things that I've actually seen, you know, some some films that I've seen, they, they scare me more than anything um, um, because it's real. But there's a really good script out there that we've been developing. So I'm working on that as a producer. And um, are there any other ones? Um, you know, it'd be nice to be part of a franchise. I wasn't really part of the reanimator franchise in a way because it sort of moved on without me so to be part of a, a, a some other horror franchise would be fun to say oh I'm part of some other legacy of, an, of another film that has already existed you know if they make another Hellraiser or they make another Friday the 13th or something like that that would be fun to be a part of of one of those kinds of films which I haven't gotten able I haven't been able to do yet I guess on that I've I've heard this back and forth between different actresses within horror. I did really want to ask you quickly if um, do you what what do you think about the term scream queen? Because it's a little bit controversial. Some people like it and some people don't. Do you consider yourself a scream queen? I wrote an article in 2015 about the term. Personally, I'm not a fan of the term, even though I know that people use it in um, a flattering way. Mostly, they're you know it's it, it's an endearment for a lot of people to call me or somebody else a screen queen, but I find the term to be kind of old fashioned and antiquated and reductive and not really in keeping with the deep emotions and narrative story that a lot of women go through in the horror genre. There's no equivalent for a man. Yeah, so I was gonna say we, that. <laughs> why are we calling a woman a screen queen? You know, I mean, I just, it just, it sounds like a, a cheap term for um, the worthy work that women do in the genre. Um, thank you so much for your time. You've kind of hinted at some serial killer um, project on the horizon, but is there anything else that um, you can give us a hint of or what's coming up next for you? Uh, I have a couple of other movies coming out. Um, one is called Superhost, which will be on Shutter in September from Brandon um, Christensen, who did Z and Stillborn. And then I have another movie from Ricky Bates Jr. that is just playing the festival circuit now. Um, and um, that's called King Knight. And I play Matthew Frey Googler's mother in that film. It's more oh. of a comedy. So that's sort of fun. And then I just did a video game uh, for Warner Brothers called Back for Blood. Never voiced a character on a video game before, but that's coming out in October. That's a, a big video game. It's the spiritual sequel to a video game called Left for Dead. And I played the mom or just mom in Back for Blood. So that was super, super fun. Never done anything like that. Voicing a character for a video game. It was uh, one of the highlights of a very bad year this year because we, we, we recorded it during the pandemic. So um, I look forward to playing that when that comes out. Cool. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Emma. 
and all the best. I've linked Barbara's article on the term Scream Queen below. One of the things that really surprised me about this interview was when Barbara said that she opts out of roles where she doesn't think that she can add anything to the movie. It really shows that Barbara is looking for a lot more than just a role in the film. She's looking for the right fit and for films where her presence will help the dynamic and the story. And in her most recent film, Jacob's Wife, you can see exactly why this role was meant for her.